Hey guys, it's Tristan here. So this is the last video on sepsis in children in the emergency department. And we're just gonna go through a few common things to remember and watch out for and mistakes to try and avoid. So here are some pearls and pitfalls of sepsis and fever in children in the ED. So first one is don't forget to look at age adjusted vital signs. Now luckily most electronic medical records now adjust the observation chart to show you what the normal is for that age. But if they don't, you need to remember to look at the correct reference range for the age that you're, of the child you're assessing. The second thing I want you to think about is a clear safety net. So it's really important whenever you discharge a child, which will be most of the children you see because most kids are well enough to go home when we see them in the ED. Just make a good plan with the parents of what they need to look out for, when they need to return, what you think the diagnosis is and you know what could go wrong, what you're worried about. And if necessary, make a definite plan for follow up either with a GP or in the children's review service. Take parental concern really seriously. I think this is something that people often say and not everyone does. So, you know, the whole idea of this is sepsis is difficult to pick up in children and sometimes parents will pick up on subtle changes in their child's behaviour or appearance that you might not see if you don't know the child so well. And so, of course, some people will say, oh, maybe they're just being anxious and they're worried about their kid. And maybe that's true, but you can't just assume that. So you've got to do your thorough workup and assessment and just look for any abnormal signs that would suggest a child could be at risk of more severe infection. Next thing to remember, just like adults, sepsis is time critical. So treatment is time critical. That includes antibiotics. If a child's in septic shock, they need to get antibiotics within the hour. And um, otherwise, you can delay antibiotics a bit so you can get cultures first. But you still shouldn't delay them more than three hours just to get cultures. So you don't want to get unnecessarily delays to antibiotics just for investigations. But, it, you know, it improves the yield of cultures if you can do it after. Second thing, don't forget to dose fluid by weight. It's quite easy to overdo fluid resuscitation in a child and it should be given, for example, as a 10 mil per kilo crystalloid bolus for shock. And then I think if you're junior, anything beyond that, just ask your paediatric team or ask a senior colleague, you know, what do I do next after giving my first bolus? Because you can cause real problems if you give a baby too much fluid. Next thing is blood sugar is probably more important in children than adults and that's because, well, two reasons. One is children are more prone to hypoglycemia and number two is that it can be a marker of severe infection. So it's a, a sign that a child is more unwell. It can, you know, either signify adrenal insufficiency or refractory septic shock or, you know, something else nasty. So it's good to check that blood sugar. And then finally, just a fever on its own isn't necessarily worrying. So if we're talking about an older child, say one or above, um, and they've got no other problems and they're eating and drinking well and the examination looks good and they don't have any other abnormal vital signs, then they could probably still go home if they've got a fever because most of the etiologies are simple viral illnesses that don't need further investigation or treatment. Um, so that's it for the videos on sepsis. I just want to draw your attention to the three key learning points from my very first video on this, which was um, take abnormal signs seriously, particularly any abnormal observations, especially if it's, you know, heart rate or oxygen levels. And then uh, remember for the signs of an un unwell child, we've got that paediatric assessment triangle. So we're looking at appearance, uh, which has the uh, mnemonic tickles for tone, interactive interactivity consolability their look and their speech or cry and then we've got breathing and circulation breathing is the signs of respiratory distress and circulation is usually the color so the whether pale or mottled or cyanotic and then don't forget fever in a young baby needs to be taken seriously and they all need investigations of some kind and often some urgent management if they're under four weeks they just get everything urine blood lp if they're a bit older than that it might depend on what guideline you're reading and it depends on whether the child is well or unwell but needs to be taken seriously and if in doubt just get help from one of your seniors so i hope you found these videos helpful um and we'll be moving on to some other videos in the pediatric topics and then once i've done a few pediatric topics i will be getting back to some toxicology stuff um so thanks very much for listening